uh, is my screen visible to you guys? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, some problem solving, maybe. Mm. Let's say. Uh, 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 basically, we can write a program. Uh, program to sum. Program to calculate sum. Of first n numbers. So, how we can do it or do that? Can anyone tell? It's a very simple program. Basically, we just need to write a uh, simple logic, uh, which will be, um, let's say, if uh, this something like this, it's my function. Uh, and let's say, and I'm giving to you, and you should be returning some of first n natural number. And let's say if I'm giving input as three, your output should be six. Okay. If uh, my input is five, your output should be how much? Fifteen, maybe. Why? Uh, because five, uh, first five numbers, uh, first five natural number is nothing but one plus two plus three plus four plus five. It's 15 only, right? So how we can solve this question? Uh, uh, so is we can easily do this using the for loop. So we can yeah. declare a count variable. If we if we run a for loop and add every number to the count, it will it ultimately return the sum. Okay, we can start from zero till n, and uh, yeah. answer plus equals to n. Yes. But yes. what will the time complexity of this code? Uh, n. Order of n. Correct. Yes. 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 And this will be the time complexity, and what will the space complexity? I believe it's n, maybe. Uh, why it's n? Uh, because uh, I believe like it's taking the n numbers of space, something like that. No, no. Uh, if I'm taking uh, n as an input, and we are just creating uh, how many variables we are creating, n will be uh, given as an input. Uh, n is variable. we are creating, and i is another variable we are creating. So basically, we are creating two variables only. So it will be a constant then? Mm -hmm. Correct. So, okay. but can we do something better? Uh, guys, can we do something better, something to improve our solution? If we remember uh, from our uh, high school, we have read a formula that uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus till till n, if there are n terms, Correct, there are n terms. And this sequence is nothing is an AP because the common difference is one. 
okay common difference is plus one and this thing is an ap and there are n terms so we can write something correct uh so sum of n natural number is n by two then uh like first term n plus first one term. correct first term plus last term okay so it's nothing but n multiplied by n plus one divided by two okay so instead of running a for loop instead of running a for loop instead of running uh, this kind of for loop we can avoid it and we can just calculate our answer by n multiplied by n plus one divided by two okay uh so sum n and we can return our answer fine so if this is our code if this is our code what will be our uh, time complexity uh, is it n square correct uh why n square we are doing uh, constant kind of operation right yeah because i was thinking like if you multiply you know and so basically say so at the end it comes like n square by two plus uh say n by two n square is greater which is n square it's like like uh simplifying the formula something like that i don't even remember the exact process but that's some what i remember Uh, basically, uh, what we are doing, see, uh, we are doing one multiplication operation and one division operation. Correct? It won't be n square, correct? Multiplication won't be taking n square or multi just multiplication division won't be taking n square, correct? What we are doing, we are doing some constant operations. So our time complexity is constant, and our uh, space uh, complexity is also constant. Uh, can you please explain that again? How is it constant? Uh, time like, complexity. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me tell you something like this. If you are saying order of n square, maybe, or let's talk about this guy. When we are telling uh order of n it mean this time complexity will be linearly dependent on uh, the given input correct yes okay uh maybe if our uh, something like that let's say uh, just a hypothetical example uh, let's say when the input is let's say 10 to the power 5 we are also getting uh we are getting our answer in let's say 10 to power 5 uh, millisecond uh not millisecond maybe nanosecond we are getting okay when uh this guy is 10 to the power 10 we are getting our input at 10 to the power 10 nanosecond value Okay, basically what is uh, the idea is that it's linearly dependent. But do you think here uh, the n will be depending on the input? Here we are just doing the multiplication and uh, division. So let me just tell you one thing. Uh, all, all the division, all the assignment operations, all assignment operations, all arithmetic operations, okay? all uh, logical operations okay and few other things will take constant amount of time now we need to see how many constant operations we are performing in our code so if we see over here in uh, in this example method one you can see here we are performing one constant operation because one assignment is happening now here if you see in this line in this line uh, almost a constant operation is happening 
okay but how many times this constant operation is happening can you tell me how many times this constant operation is happening this guy Uh, n times mm, correct because it's inside the for loop so it will run when the for loop uh, until the for loop finishes so it will be n times like that. okay uh correct uh which means for when i equals to when i equals to 1 it will be take in constant time when i equals to 2 it will take constant time when i equals to 3 it will take constant time similarly it will go and so forth when i equals to n again it will take constant time so basically see here it's been constant time here it's been constant here it's been constant time, here it's been constant time basically this whole constant times got added but how many constant times got added like constant time, constant time, constant time, this many times it got added. But how many times are there? How many constant times are there? N times. N times. Yeah. Time. Almost n times. So which is nothing but constant multiplied by n. Now it's fine. But in this case, in this case, we are doing one multiplication operation. This is nothing but constant time. And this is also constant time. And we are assigning. Maybe assignment also you can refer as a constant time. How many constant operations are there in the whole scenario? One constant, two constant, three constant. Order of one multiplied by three. It's nothing but order of three. This also you can say constant order. I got it. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Fine. Uh, fine. So let's move ahead with some question. Uh, just give me a minute. Let me some pick, uh, pick up some question for you guys. Okay, uh, so what you can do is that example uh, problem to question. So I will be giving you a number n, and uh, as well as uh, basically I will be giving you n as well as a n by n matrix. Do you know what is a matrix, everyone? matrix is nothing but 2d array okay now let's say uh let's say something like this okay one two three four five six seven eight okay um so you need to calculate so See the what is what will be the input? I will be giving you an n by n matrix as well as I will be giving you the value of n, and you need to find the sum of two diagonals. First, this diagonal, sum one, and then this diagonal, sum two. Can I just explain the question one more time? Like, what do you need to find? Okay. I will be giving you a n by n matrix or 2D array. Uh, and you need to find the sum of the uh, sum of uh, the diagonals, like 
this will be one of the diagonal what will be the sum it's nothing but 15 correct you need to print 15 as well as you need to print what will be the sum here is uh, by chance here is also the value is 15 only 7 uh, see 7 plus 5 plus 3 it's 15 and 1 plus 5 plus 9 it's also 15 so your output should be something like 15 by 15 15 something shall i give another example or it's fine it's okay i'm just trying to think how to do it yeah
Yeah, can you guys think of something or shall I uh, take it? I think so, you can. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think it's for the first uh, the diagonal. So so we have to add like uh, four number like add four numbers to the first thing, like to the uh, start and to the numbers till n. And for the second diagonal, we have to uh, add two numbers, and we have to go till n by uh, n minus two. And for the first diagonal, I think it has the loop has to go till n, and adding four numbers, like one plus four five, five plus four nine, and then that uh, total sum like till n. The second diagonal is we have to start by. We have to start by like n minus. Uh, we have to start like the number uh, first add num number two three and then start from there three plus two five five plus two seven and like we have to end it by n minus two uh, so like can that. you come again like uh okay so this is a zero column this is the first column this is the second column this is zero through first row second row this index will be zero 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 one and zero two one zero one 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 two two zero two one two two yeah now what you are saying so for the first diagonal the loop will start from z zeroth column like from zero zero and it will go till uh, n like the column two two but it will uh, start adding like four numbers like the whatever the number will be in zero zero it it will add four to it like it, it will go to the fourth four? no, like not to the number but to the column like then it uh like one plus four like uh like, so if i if i okay, if you see the first talk about someone in someone what will be doing like if like if uh, according to the first matrix which i'm seeing like it is one plus four five five plus four nine so it's one? just adding four so one it's just adding four four five and five plus four nine and hey, then it man. is wait 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 it's not uh Okay, it's my bad that I chose those values. Uh, but uh, okay, I should have uh, taken some different values. You got the whole uh, question wrong. It's not about uh, adding four over here. Okay, in this place, it can be any value. In this oh, place, it can be any value. It's not like. Uh, this values are always there. Like it's not a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine will uh, be there. Uh, the matrix can be like okay, something like this. One, two, one, two, three, four, but five. it it has to be a three by three matrix. No, I am giving you three by three. It can be anything. But it'll be n cross n only. It will be n cross n matrix, man. I already told. Uh, I will be giving you some number, and it will be n cross n matrix, and that matrix will be also given to you. Fine. Basically, a square matrix. It will be. I think you should explain because I don't. I don't. I was just calculating on the basis of values. No, no. Uh, the this time from here it will be getting two. From here it will be getting eight. Correct. Just think for one more, uh, two more minutes, and then we can start because uh, you got the question wrong. Uh, I have one idea, Rahul. Yeah, yeah, please share. Yeah, so I was thinking, say, for a n by n matrix, why, uh, say, for example, say, just focus on someone for now, someone. So if I run like a nested for loop, 
and you know increment by two it can work i can get the, all the diagonal values for example say say i declare like a variable say in count right and i run a next follow for someone and you know say there's two variables int i in j and i increase both the follows by two then i can get the some of the diagonals it, does it seem right wait, or wait, something? Wait. for i we can run from zero to n minus one and yeah. another loop will be running j from zero to n minus one something like this exactly exactly like a nested for loop but okay, the increment will be plus two say for example normally increment by one right so i'm saying we'll increment i by two and j by two as well okay 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 and say and a variable and a variable will be like you know say in count right so we can write under the next for loop let's say count equals to count plus the array value mm. how th does this help how this going so to for help? example say uh say i is zero j is zero right now right correct, so correct. it's zero zero so say i increment by Oh no 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 no! It won't work. It won't work like that. No. No no! It won't work like that. Sorry. No. Because it, it is jumping to the third variable. Yeah. Zero zero two. No, it won't work like that. Yeah. Just give me a moment. Yeah. Let me try some other things here. So we can take the so we can take the index like if it starts from zero. So we can take the middle uh, middle column of the middle row, and after that the last column of the last row, like something like that. And we can calculate first the middle row and middle column so whatever the value will be in that we will add to the value in the first column and first then we will jump to the last column and last row and we will add that value wait wait, wait. but uh, in uh, you are calculating about sum one or sum two no first i am calculating uh, the sum one diagonal okay in sum one what will we doing we'll be starting so we will zero, we, we will first calculate the uh, uh, middle column and the middle row, like where they meet, like, and then we will uh, jump directly to the value for the last column and the last row where they meet, the last column and the last row. Okay. And we will add these value to the element in the first uh, where the first column and first row started. Let's say its uh, size is big. Okay. What is the matrix of like five or uh, six rows? Then we will just calculate them. How you will be first going to meet then here? So, so, so they, these rows are one, two, three, four, five rows, right? Mm -hmm. So its uh, middle will be uh, count to like three. So, first okay. I will okay, got your point. Uh, can you try for uh, this uh, second uh, diagonal? Okay. Uh, so let's the second start first one. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So for the second column, the second column is. So it will. So second column is starting from the last element of the first row and the last element of the first column. Like with the meet. Okay. Or just we can for the second column we can just take the last value of the first row. So whatever will be the last value of the first row, we can just take that, and then again we have to calculate the middle, uh, the middle of the row where both the uh, column and row meets, and then again. If do this kind of jumping now, what middle then uh, go to the end and go to the front. Uh, our we our co uh, code will be clumsy. Uh, basically, you need to go in one direction, right? Like either start from bottom, go up, 
or start from up go down correct so what whatever we have done like in the first sum we will reverse that so if we will reverse that then it will start from the should it will be start from the, the other side i think okay. because it's diagonal so if we will reverse the diagonal and it... okay let's talk about someone in someone just analyze this matrix okay this mm -hmm. matrix alone i have just uh, written this indexes of uh, this cell so basically we have a sum of 0 0 index 1 1 index 2 2 correct for sum 2 uh sum 2 it's 0 2 1 1 2 0 okay what it is it is uh 0 2 then 1 1 and two zero. Now, have you seen a pa pattern that the size of the matrix was three? So it's also see zero, one, two. Basically, three cells are there. Here also three cells are there. As the size was three, so it's zero, one, two. And here is also see uh, this guy is also zero, one, two. Here also zero, zero, one, and two. So, to calculate the first sum, what I can just do is that, see, this is this is the ith, uh, let's say, ith index and this, let's say this is the jth index, okay? Now, both the indexes are the same. So, here, for me, writing the logic, it's pretty simple. I will be writing from 0 to n minus 1, and I need to print array of i. So you have to only reverse the value of the c c c columns, like just the columns. Uh, here in the sum two. Yes, sum two. In sum two, uh, what is the logic? So, so the in, first the the first value in the sum one is zero one two for the columns, and in the sum two it's two one zero. So it's the reverse. Correct, but uh, at that moment only, how we can generate two? See, two is nothing but two is nothing but three minus one minus zero. Correct. We can write two something like this also, right? Three minus one minus zero. We can write one as three minus one minus one. Correct. This value is one only, right? And this value is two. Correct. And how zero? We can write it 3 minus 1 minus 2. Okay. So here, if you understand, here it here we have 0, here we have 1, and here we have 2. So basically, we also are we are also getting i. But here, this part, the remaining part is constant, that is 3 minus 1. So 3 is was the n. Okay, 3 was the n. So n minus 1 minus i. So this is how we can generate. That is from 0 to n minus 1, we will be printing the i so and n minus 1 minus i. Are you guys able to understand? Yes. Uh, Rahul, no? yeah, yeah, yes, sir. yeah, yeah. So I understand how you did the sum one. I, that's clear to me. Can you please explain how do you do the sum two for again? Like after you get zero, one, zero, two, one, one, two, zero. What is the logic behind sum sum two? Can you explain the logic again to find sum two? So see, my idea was here we are getting zero, one, and two, but how can I somehow manipulate two 
how i can rewrite this part okay the remaining part so that i can relate with i i want to represent j in terms of i okay here my j, i and j was equal so j equals to i so i wrote in place of j i wrote i okay here in place of j i need to somehow relate it with i correct or not correct i need to i need to write j in terms of i how i can do that here i saw it is increasing and it is decreasing now see if 1 is there then 2 is there then 3 is there something like that uh, 100 is there now uh, how uh, shall i uh, tell you something like mm, so 99 is also there maybe let's say so see uh, this two extreme this two extreme is 100 okay if we add this two extreme it's 100 then again if you to add this two guys then again it's 100 okay so if you see this logic as well if you see this logic as well 0 2 is 2 1 1 is also 2 2 0 is also 2 like if you add 0 plus 2 is 2 1 plus 1 is 2 2 plus 0 is also 2 and one thing is increasing and another thing is in decreasing in a constant uh, pace so somehow we need to relate uh, with i so i did that is how can i write 2 in terms of i so it's 2 is nothing but 3 minus 1 minus 0 okay here 3 is nothing but why i just wrote why i didn't wrote 4 minus 2 oh uh, sorry uh, why i didn't wrote 4 minus uh, yeah why i didn't wrote 4 minus 2 minus 0 i this is also will generate i could have written 4 minus 2 minus 0 0 for uh, generating 2 right but why i didn't why i uh, didn't it that because here nothing i can relate with n right here uh, my size was 3 uh, so if i am writing 4 or any other uh, number it won't make any sense so what should i write over here something which can generate this thing and this thing should be generated with the given info as well like i had 3 as the size like 3 by 3 matrix so i so 3 minus 1 from here i am getting 2 and minus 0 so we are getting 2 and here 3 minus 1 minus 1 so we are getting 1 and 3 minus 1 minus 2 we here we will be getting 0 here see 0 1 2 these are i values only and these okay, things yeah, are well, I, got you. i got your concept yeah perfect yeah and even if i try to explain you in some different way just look in this graph uh not graph this matrix that is if we add the indexes of all the like if you add i and j in this matrix you will see this is sum is 0 this sum is 1 then this sum is 2 then this sum is 3 and this sum is 4 so you can see a clearly a layer that that is this is sum here zero here the sum is 1 here the sum is 2 okay here the sum is 3 basically i am not saying total sum okay i am not saying total sum here the index sum in this diagonal the index sum is 1 here uh, in this diagonal uh, the index sum is 2 in this diagonal index sum is 3 here it's 4 so we are interested about this guy right what is the sum 2 correct it means in every cell in every cell uh like if we add i plus j if we add i plus j in in this diagonal if we add i plus j we, what is the value we are getting 2 so two, what is 2 how we can write 2 3 minus 1 correct yes or no guys yes 3 minus 1 okay 
So let me write in terms of n. Uh, three is nothing but n. Okay. So I can say i plus j i plus j equals to n minus one. So if I just uh, uh, change the positions, it's nothing but n minus one minus i. From here also, we can get this logic. Clear? Yes, yes. OK. So let me just give you another task is that, again, I'm giving you a matrix. Uh, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in every row, uh, you need to calculate uh, the sum of odd numbers in every row and print them. Okay. In the first row, the sum of odd number is four, so print four. In this row, the sum of odd numbers is five. Okay. Why four? Because here odd number is one and three. Correct. One and three are the odd numbers. So print it four. Uh, then in the second row, this guy is uh, 5. So we have printed 5. This is 7 plus 9. So 16. So you need to, this should be our, your output. Can you explain it uh, again? Like what we have to do? Uh, you need to sum the odd numbers in every row and print them for every row. In first row, uh, one and three are the odd numbers, right? So what is the sum of one and three? Four. Mm. So you printed four. Similarly, for uh, all the sure. So guys, can you try? I don't know the whole concept, but like it's like the uh, starting from the like uh, every row like different time, and what is doing it is going to the row through n columns because three by three matrix it will go through the time of three like its end, and then it is adding the values. So again, it comes to the next row. Again, it goes to the nth column, uh, and again, I find the odd number. Nth like column. Yeah. So so it like starts from every row different time, and like from the first row, it goes to the nth column. Like whatever that will be. Like if it's four by four matrix, so it will go to the fourth column. If it is five by five, five matrix, it's, column. It's the it's uh, it, we have to calculate the sum of odd numbers in each row differently. So that's why. 
it should not differently yeah because uh, so the so it's 5 by 5 matrix the n is 5 so it will go till the fifth column because the fifth column will be the last column now what is the sum in the second it's six right why it's the column just because the pattern is something like that you are just figuring the pattern or something uh, okay we have to calculate the sum of the odd odd values which are present in the indices right not the value of odd indices yeah elements should be odd Uh, so any so any idea so let me tell you you need to go over every row one by one and when you are traveling uh, through each row you need to check if that element is odd or not uh if it is odd then you need to submit and after the after you traverse that uh, particular row you need to print it can you give it a try else i can give you the try for another one minute like think about it write some pseudo code if you want if you are not uh, uh, getting it clear i will write some pseudo code okay so the loop of the row will start from like from 0 to n yeah okay uh, so basically here the matrix will be like m cross n like uh, n will be the number of rows and m will be the columns 
so it will start from the loop of the row will start from i i equal to uh, it, it 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 will have like two for loops i think yeah yeah so, when you are travels so for uh, for the rows it will start from a zero and it will go till a, 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 n and uh, inside that the in the other for loop it will start from zero and it will go till m is is that right like it will go like that yeah yeah something like that okay let me write this one again so basically we will be writing the for loop uh basically we will be go, going over the rows okay so row from 0 to n minus 1 and here we will be having sum equals to 0 and like for every row we will be calculating the sum right so here we will be column uh, 0 from n minus 1 if that particular guy that is row column is odd then sum plus equals to we need to store that guy okay basically this guy only i'm just uh, writing it in short after we are done with this for loop it means we are done calculating the sum then we can print our sum that's it Guys, uh, fine. Um, shall we do one more question? This yeah. Problem. yeah. Yeah, but uh, I'm just wondering. Yeah, I understand the logic. I was thinking like this, like the same way. But I was just uh, wondering, how do you distinguish between the rows, right? Because you want three separate values, right? So how is this code bringing the three separate values in, right? Aren't they combining, merging all the values, like because you have only one sum variable? That's what I'm thinking. No, no, no. See what will be happening. Uh, see, let's consider this scenario only. Uh, our n is three. Uh, m is also three. And let's say our row starts from uh, zero. Okay. And in that case, our column is also zero right now, and our sum mm -hmm. is uh, zero. Okay. Now, when uh, zero zero, we we are checking if that number is odd. Yeah, it's odd. So we added one to it. Mm -hmm. Now it got incremented to one. Uh, zero one is not uh, odd, correct? Yes. Uh, then it will be getting increased to two. Then it's odd, right? Now we yeah. are writing three to it, four. After we are done with this for loop, we will be printing this sum. So we printed four. Oh, okay. And then again, the sum goes back to zero and the column Sorry. starts all over again, right? Okay. I see. I see what you did there. Perfect. Okay. Okay, let's see if I can pick one more question. Just a minute, I'm just checking the questions.
okay uh let's say uh do you guys know about subarray yes uh okay so one two four three so what are the all subarrays for this one will be one uh, this then this then this correct and there will yeah, be like yeah. one two one two yeah two four four three okay one two four two four three one four three Now you need to print all the subarrays. Uh, a given array will I will be giving you an array, and you need to print all the subarray. so you got the question right basically we will be giving you an array and you need to print all the subarrays of that uh, array so can you guys try or are you guys trying
guys have it here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so just thinking do it here. Okay, guys. Uh, let me tell you. Let me tell you only. Uh, so see in survey, uh, uh, we need some starting index. We need some ending index. Correct. Here for this guy, the starting index. So this starting index was one zero. This one. This two. This three. Correct. Correct, guys. Yes. So the starting index of this array is zero zero. Uh, so starting uh, index and ending index is zero, and then the index is also zero. Here the starting index is one, ending index is also one. Here the starting index is two, ending index is two. Here the starting index is three, ending index is three. For this case, the starting index is zero, ending index is one. Uh, and here the starting index is one and ending index is uh, two. Here the starting index is zero, ending index is two. Here the starting index is zero, ending index is three. So it's the just the variation uh, of the indexes that we can do and we can generate all the things. Fine. So what we can do is that uh, for starting index starts from zero till n minus one, and another index will be something like for uh, uh, ending index starting from starting index till n minus one. Uh, we can print the array starting index for the Ending index, something like that.
Uh, guys, uh, you got it, right? So let's say our starting index, basically starting index starts from uh, zero, let's say. Uh, we will be uh, starting our ending index with zero, then one, then two, then three. So basically we will pair this guy, then this guy, then this guy, then this guy. And we will be printing all of them. Basically these things will be getting covered. Okay, zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three. That's all we covered. In the next iteration, when SI equals to starting index is one, then ending index is also one, then it will be two, then it's three. So one, 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 two, one, three. So one, 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 two, and uh, this guy was one, three. Uh, yeah, one, three. Okay, guys, uh, understood? How do you think? Yeah, yes. yes. Okay, fine. Uh, that's all from my side for today. Uh, we can discuss more for in the next class. Uh, yeah. You have any doubt? Oh, no, not for now. Yeah, I got everything. Yeah. Fine, guys. Okay. Uh, bye. Good night, guys. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.